Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for February 26th, 2024. Listen, February 26th, before I get into the message, let me just say this. I've been celebrating, Isabella and I have been celebrating our anniversary all weekend, but today is our actual anniversary. And so Isabella's watching, happy anniversary, babe. I do want to say this. Uh, a godly marriage is something to be celebrated. You, you should enjoy your marriage. Uh, a godly marriage, when you have one man and one woman submitted themselves unto the Lord, and it's a triple strand cord, is is one man and God and his wife, one woman and God and her husband, and there's a triple strand cord that is not easily broken. Marriage is a blessing. So if you're married, celebrate your spouse, build them up, be your spouse's greatest fan, and you are doing life together. Say amen to that. All right, let me get into the message. So I'm teaching a series on laser focus on God's fixed purpose. And what I did was at the beginning of the year, I told you that we would be locked in on Proverbs 4 and 25 all year long. And I gave you like 20 other scriptures. And then we've been going through all those 20 scriptures. But there's a passage that wasn't part of those 20 that the Holy Spirit this weekend was like, I want you to teach on that. I shared a passage uh, while I was raising an offering and um, a couple of weeks ago. And that passage, the Holy Spirit brought it back and said, look, I want you to talk about the favor of God tomorrow. This was yesterday. When we got home, Isabella and I, we were gone for the weekend. When we got home, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to deal with this passage tomorrow. And I've been meditating on it and I'm super excited about it. The, the title of today's message is the link between generosity and the favor of God. Put in the chat, I am generous. Put in the chat, I walk in the favor of God. There's a link between your generosity and the favor of God. And I'm gonna talk about it. Get ready to receive. All right, so let's get into the word of, of the Lord. So once again, we're dealing with laser focus on God's fixed purpose. We're looking at Proverbs 4 and 25 from the Passion Translation. We're going to be looking at this pretty much all year, but I'm looking at other things as well. I'm still kind of laying the foundation. Excuse me. I'm laying the foundation for the year. Here we are at the end of February. I'm still laying the foundation, uh, but this is going to be good teaching this year on laser focus on fixed purpose. And I'm going to talk about the favor of the Lord. Proverbs 4 and 25 says this. Set your gaze on the path before you. I have a path that is set before me. You have one that's set before you. I need to set my gaze. You need to set your gaze. Put in the chat. I set my gaze on the path that is before me with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. I'm going to look straight ahead. I'm going to, I know that God has a purpose for my life. I'm going to be locked in on it and I will ignore life's distractions. So what's the other passage we're going to look at today? This is what the Lord have me to share with you today. So like I said, it was about a week or two weeks ago, I was raising an offering in church and I always pray about like, Lord, you know, when I'm raising an offering, what scripture do you want me to use? And I was led to this scripture and this scripture, as I shared it, it just leaped in my heart. And yesterday the Holy Spirit brought it back to my remembrance. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25 from the Passion Translation. This is what the Bible says. Generosity brings prosperity. Let me pause there real quick. So if say this, I'm generous. Put in the chat, I, I, I have a generous spirit. Generosity brings prosperity, but withholding or being stingy, holding, not giving, withholding from charity brings poverty. So as I give, I'm going to walk in prosperity. Those that refuse to give, the Bible says that lends itself or leads to poverty. Verse 25. Those, to, those who live to bless others will have blessings heaped upon them. Oh, let me just pause right there. Uh, say this. Say, I live to bless others. I'm living my life to be a blessing to other people. And those who live to be a blessing to other people will have blessings, the Bible says, heaped upon them. And the one who pours out his life to bless others, to be a blessing to others, watch this, 
I told you that many times. I take my life and I pour my life out as an offering. I've given my life to the Lord. I give myself away. So the one who pours out his life to bless others will be saturated with favor. Oh my God. When I read that, when I was, I was in church and I read that, it was like an explosion in my heart happened. It was like, whoa, that's me. Glory to God, right? I give. I pour out my life to be a blessing to other people. I'm always giving. I'm not just giving money. I'm giving everything. I'm giving my life. I give myself away. And when you give, you give money, but you also give everything. And you're pouring your, the Bible says, not only will you blessings heaped upon you, but I'm going to be saturated with favor. Glory to God. Put in the chat, say, I am, I'm, I feel like preaching this morning. I feel, I am saturated with favor. So what does this mean for you today? I'm saturated with the favor of God. I'm talking about the favor of God is on me profusely to the point where I'm just saturated in it. So for me to teach this, cause you know, I'm a teacher, right? For me to teach this, I can't assume that you know anything about the favor of God. I can't assume, like, like I know that people talk about the favor of God, but do you understand it? And, and one of the reasons why this is really important is because at the beginning of this year, I shared with you that my spiritual father, Pastor Tony Brazelton, he prophesied that 2024 would be a year of fixed purpose. And as he said, okay, you know, this is what the Lord told him for 2024. And I said, okay, Lord, well, what do you want me to teach at Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries? Do you want me to just teach fixed purpose? Do you want me to teach something under it? Do you want something so? What do you want me to teach? And the Lord, the Holy Spirit led me to teach laser focus on God's fixed purpose. I was like, okay, so that's what I'm teaching. All year long, I will be teaching about having a laser focus on God's fixed purpose. Got it. Well, another thing that Pastor Tony said, he said that this year, 2024, would be a year of supernatural kindness. Well, what's another way to say supernatural kindness? The favor of God, the favor of the Lord, right? And so, so I'm like, okay, I'm still laying the foundation for the year. And the Holy Spirit was like, don't finish the foundation for the year without teaching about that supernatural kindness piece. Put in the chat, say, this is a year of supernatural kindness for me. This supernatural kindness is the favor of God. So I need to explain to you what the favor of God is, you know, kind of how it functions, what it means. So that it's not just not like, you know, the favor of God, F-O-G and all this stuff. But no, you know me, I like to teach. I have to explain this to you, right? So we just read Proverbs uh, chapter 11, verses 24 and 25, and I'm going to deal with it today, probably tomorrow as well. But let's talk about the favor of God and how giving positions us to walk in the favor of God so that we can experience God's best. So here's number one, <laughs> definitions for the favor of God. I need to give you some working definitions. So there's some people that I love, respect, and admire, and I'm going to use some of their definitions and give you one that's my definition as well. Well, a, a widely accepted definition for the favor of God is the unmerited goodness of God, right? It's just this grace is unmerited favor or the unmerited goodness of God, where I didn't work for it. I don't deserve it. It is the unmerited goodness of God. That's one definition for the favor of God. The late great Kenneth Hagin said, favor is the inclination to provide approval or special treatment where God moves on somebody's heart to give you an approval or special treatment, right? So you submitted a proposal, you submitted a resume, God favors you to be approved, to get special treatment, and God moved on their heart. It is God's gracious kindness towards us. When we operate in God's favor, Kenneth Hagin said, we receive blessings that we didn't work for. It is his unearned grace at work in our lives. Put in the chat, I get blessings that I did not work for. Pastor Bill Winston said it this way, God's favor can be understood as the guarantee of his presence and the assurance of his promise. So his presence and his promise to always give us the victory. Put in the chat, God always gives me the victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just about receiving blessings. It's about being positioned to make the impact that God aligns with God's, with his kingdom purposes. So Pastor Bill is saying that you're going to receive blessings, but you're also going to have kingdom impact. It's the favor of God. Pastor Jerry Savelle said it this way. Un the favor of God is undeserved divine intervention that brings about opportunities and blessings and positive outcomes. So put in the chat, I have opportunities and blessings 
and positive outcomes, and they were undeserved. I didn't work for this stuff. God's favor can open doors that seem impossible to open, bring about supernatural blessings, and position individuals for success and victory that goes beyond human effort or merit. Pastor Jerry says, listen, he, he's encouraging us as believers to es expect and rely on the favor of God in every area of our lives. Put in the chat, I expect and I rely on the favor of God. I expect goodness. I expect kindness. I expect victory. I expect to win. I expect things to work out for my good. I do, because I believe that the favor of God goes before me like a shield. The Rick Pina translation, or the Rick Pina definition of favor, you've probably heard me say this before. Favor is when God raises up people to use their power, their ability, their influence, and their money to help you in ways that you cannot help yourself. They're not doing this because you did anything to earn it or anything to deserve it. They are doing this solely because God prompted them to extend to you supernatural kindness. So God prompted them, put in the chat, God prompts people to extend to me supernatural kindness. That's the favor of God, right? So let's, number two, understanding the favor of God. Now, this is why it's important for you to sign up to get my notes. All of this stuff that I'm giving you, I, it's all in my notes, and you get it for free when you sign up. Just go to todaysword.org, big right, uh, top right of the website. It says subscribe. Click on it, put in your email address. All right, number two, understanding God's favor. So God's favor is his unmerited grace. It's his love. It's his blessing that is bestowed upon us, often manifested in ways that are beyond our comprehension, right? So what happens is, when God favors you, is that you experience supernatural kindness and it's like beyond your comprehension where you are like, wow, or like, why is God doing, like, this is crazy. And you're like, why is God doing this? And, the, and oftentimes the people that are doing it, they will say stuff like even heathen, these people don't have to be born again. The Bible says that God can turn the heart of a king like he turns a river. So, so these people don't have to be born again for God to touch their heart, to favor you. And there are people that would even say, I don't normally do this. I don't even know why I'm doing this, but, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for you, right? That's the favor of God. It encompasses, watch this, protection, uh, provision, and preferential treatment. Put in the chat, God gives me preferential treatment. People go out of their way to be kind to me. Why? Because it's part of God's divine purpose. God gives me opportunities. Why? They align with God's kingdom plans and purposes. I'm walking with God and God wants to do what he wants to do in my life. Remember Isaiah, we read that? He says, I, what, what I said is going to happen is what's going to happen. And so if God needs to move on somebody, even that's a heathen, for, for his will to manifest in my life, he will do it. And, and the favor of God is not earned. The favor of God is not deserved. The favor of God is just a reflection of God's goodness and kindness towards us. It is unmerited favor. It's the favor of God. So when I recognize God's favor is on me and in me and with me and for me, it cultivates a deep sense of gratitude. Put in the chat, I live my life with a deep sense of gratitude and a, de a dependency on God, where I'm like, oh my God, you're so good to me. Lord, I have a deep sense of gratitude where, where praise is continually on my lips because God is better to me than I deserve. God, God's blessing, God's favor on my life far exceeds my performance. This is why I've asked you to be disconnected from performance-based religion. I don't want you to, to live with performance-based religion because performance-based religion says, if I I do these things right, God is going to bless me. If I obey and, and I observe the law and I do all these things right, God is going to bless me. And if I messed up and I didn't do things right, God is not going to bless me. So now your level of expectation from God is based on your performance towards God. And you will never be able to perform on the level that God wants to bless you. Come on, man. And so you got to disconnect. You got to detach your expectation from your performance. And so I know that I'm not that good. Rick Pina is just not that good. Uh, Isabella Pina, not that good. We are flawed people. We try. We're doing the best that we can. We walk in holiness and righteousness to the best of our ability. We yield unto God and we want to glorify his name. But we know this. Beyond our performance, God blesses us. Beyond our level to perform, the favor of God goes before us and causes us to experience his best. Living under God's favor will impact our interactions 
when we're dealing with somebody, God will move on their heart. They don't even know why they're doing it. God will, God will say, this is a divine appointment. God will open doors that no man can close. God will close doors that no man can open. The favor of God is often linked with obedience to his will. And so, but I want you to know that a lot of times it just comes by grace. But today we're looking at a passage that is linking the favor of God with our generosity, with our giving. So yeah, that this, I'm a teacher on this. This is important as well. I have to develop the heart of a giver. I'm embracing the favor of God. I'm submitting unto God and I'm living my life with a posture of humility. Oh, this is a point I need to make. I got to be humble enough. Put in the chat. I am humble enough to receive whatever God wants me to receive. There's some people that don't know how to receive. There's some people that know how to give, but they don't know how to receive. So when it comes time for God to elevate them, exalt them or favor them, they fight against it. Because they think that as being humble, like, oh, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm just humble. You have to be humble enough to accept whatever God wants you to do. You have to be humble enough to accept the level of blessing. So when you are sowing, 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 you also know how to reap. Listen, there are moments in your life where God wants to bless you in a way that is undeserved. It is unmerited. It is his kindness. And a lot of times Christians fight against it because they think, oh, what are people going to think? What are people going to say? Never make excuses for the favor of God. Never, never, ne never feel like you got to be guilty for God's blessing. Never feel like you have to you like justify the favor of God that's on your life. If God does something for you that is clearly his favor, and somebody in your family is now upset with you or like jealous of you or now or your friends, if people are like I, like your, the blessing on your life is causing them to feel insecure, that has nothing to do with you. Like you, you, you got to accept the great that some people are like, oh no, I don't want to accept this. Cause what are people going to think? People are going to think I'm blessed. That's what people are going to think. So you need to keep your heart open to the favor of God and walk in whatever he wants you to walk in. Even if it means that you're promoted, even if it means that you have a, a higher title, even if it means that you have a position of greater influence, you have to walk in that level of favor so that you can make the impact that you were born to make. Say amen to that. Number three. I'm trying to take my time. I'm trying not to get too excited, all right? The role of giving and generosity. All right, let me make this link here because that's what the text is teaching. Giving is a principle. And the text is teaching us that as we give, it triggers the favor of God. We are reflecting God's generous nature and it is triggering the favor of God. Generosity is not just about giving money. It's about giving, giving your life, like giving your life away, pouring your life out as an offering. And as you do, the Bible says, the text says that we're going to be saturated with the favor of God. Put in the chat, I am saturated with God's favor. So the act of giving opens the floodgates of heaven. The act of giving invites God's provision and abundance to be poured out over us in, in a way that is generous, because as we are generous towards God and others, God is generous towards us. And so what we have to do is break the back of self selfishness. We have to break the back of poverty. We have to break these things off. You got to get release that stingy spirit. <laughs> like you got to you got to be so generous to where you're not going to withhold anything. If God you don't have anything that God if God tells you to give it away that you're not going to get give it away. So when you are open like that and you're willing to give away whatever God tells you to give away and it's not just money, anything. Now, you you get to walk in not just prosperity, but the favor of God. Where generosity sets a foundation for the favor of God. The text is teaching us. It is this abundance that we are willing to receive and release that positions us to walk in this favor where we are saturated in it. So our willingness to give positions us to be stewards, not just of finances, but stewards of God's grace. Put in the chat, I steward the grace of God that's on my life. Once again, Proverbs 11 and 24 and 25. Let me give you another quote from what we read a few minutes ago. Those who live to bless others will have blessings heaped upon them. And the one who pours out his life to, to be a blessing to others, pours out his life to pour out blessings on others, will be saturated with favor. So not only is God going to give me a generosity and not only is my generous spirit open the, the door to favor, but I'm going to be saturated in it. I'm going to be saturated in the favor of God because I have a generous heart. Say amen to that. Put in the chat. I have a generous heart. Number four, last point for today. Generosity 
positions us to experience God's best or God's favor or God's kindness. Our God is a generous God. God is always giving, giving, giving. You can, you know, you can say that you, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving, right? And since God is a God of love, when you love, you give. God is always giving. And so looking at this passage, Proverbs chapter 11, 24 and 25, let me read it again. Generosity brings prosperity, but withholding or a stingy spirit brings poverty, which you, you don't want to live that way. You want to live to bless others and then blessings will be heaped upon you and you will be saturated with favor. So generosity is a key that unlocks the door to the favor of God. One of the things that I know that Isabella and I, we have seed in the ground, we give. And as we give, I can go to the Lord and be like, Lord, I thank you that we are conduits of kingdom finance. And we don't just give money. We give our lives. Like we give time, energy, effort. You know, we, we give, like we, we get on planes and we go do stuff. Isabella's going to go to Africa later this year. And, you know, although we're super busy and I didn't want her, honestly, you know, Isabella doesn't know this. She's watching right now. She was like, babe, the Africa trip. We need, and I was like, man, I, don't, I mean, we got way too much stuff going on. And the Holy Spirit was like, your wife is going to Africa. I was like, yes, sir. I said, baby, go ahead and go. Now, she, why? Because she has to give herself away. She has to get on that plane, go all the way to Africa and do whatever the Lord wants her to do, right? So that's not just about money. It's, it's, it's about being so generous that you are open to, to do whatever God wants you to do, to give yourself away. And when you give yourself away that way, the Bible says that you will be saturated with favor. Now, those conversely, the text is saying that those that refuse to give anything, they, that leads to poverty. You, wanna, you don't want to live that way. You want to align your, yourself with God's kingdom plans and purposes. You want to give yourself, put in the chat, I give myself away. The principle of sowing and reaping is evident in the, throughout the whole Bible. And so as I sow bountifully, I will reap bountifully and I will abound in favor. Generous living challenges us to trust God on a greater level. When you, when you continue to give, no matter what, no matter what your financial outlook looks like, or no matter what your schedule looks like, and you still make time for other people, and you still make time to be a blessing, and you still make time to pour into people, and you still make time to minister, and you still make time to give, and no, it doesn't matter if your finances are fluctuating or your calendar is crazy, I'm not going to stop pouring my life out. And when you do that, watch this, the text is saying it's going to bring prosperity and it's going to bring favor. The favor of God will be on you and you will be saturated in it. As you are sowing your life and giving your life away, these acts, this is, these are seeds of favor. Watch this. Say this. Say every act of generosity in my life is a seed of favor. So, so I am sowing seeds of favor and I will be saturated with the favor of God. Living my life with a laser focus on God's fixed purpose, part of it is being a conduit of kingdom finance. So for me to, to focus on God's fixed purpose for 2024, one of the things I have to do is I got to seek the Lord concerning the Lord. How do you want me to get? How much do you want us to give? Who do you want me to give? Where do you want me to sow? Who do you want me to partner with? Is it Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries? Is it our local church? What What are we giving? What are we sowing? What? How? And then how do I give my time? How do I give my talents? Who do I? Listen, you want to give on that level, and when you walk with a general spirit and you pour your life out, the text is saying you'll be saturated with favor. I tried to contain myself. And uh, I'm telling you, this is good. I'm going to flow in the same vein again tomorrow. This is a message you might need to listen to again. And if you get the notes, pay attention to those notes. There's some good stuff in those notes. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. This was good. This is going to set the tone for the whole week. Lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I stand before you today, grateful for the unending stream of your favor that is flowing in my life. I declare that your favor surrounds me like a shield and it goes before me daily, opening doors that no man can close. I am a recipient of supernatural kindness. I receive blessings that I didn't work for. <laughs> My heart overflows with generosity. And as I reflect your heart, Father, you cause me to walk in your best. I walk into divine appointments, ready to receive your kindness, and your favor positions me for opportunities 
that align with your purpose for my life. Each day I expect your favor to be manifested in ways that are beyond my imagination. You are able to do exceedingly abundantly above, and I believe that you will. So I commit my life to being a conduit for your blessings. And as I do, I will be saturated with your favor. Father, I thank you for the privilege of walking under the canopy of your favor. Greater is coming for me because of your goodness and your supernatural kindness that was prepared for me before the world began. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is today's word. Tomorrow, I have another one. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, you're not getting my notes, I don't know why not. Go to todaysword.org, sign up, get the messages. Hit the subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. I love you. God loves you more. Walk into this day knowing that the favor of God can be on you profusely. You can be saturated with favor when you live, a, live with a heart of generosity, where you pour your life out as a blessing to other people. Say amen to that. I love you. God loves you more. Have an amazing day. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless. Oh, 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 do me a favor. Leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. I like to read those. And then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to set up a coaching and mentorship program. And Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. And then lastly, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to write several books and journals to help people grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please go to rickpina.co if you don't have our material, and there's also apparel there as well. Listen, thank you for being a blessing to us. We pray that our ministry will continue to be a blessing to you.